This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're answering a question from one of our TipSquirrel viewers. A viewer writes in and says, Hi, I'm new to 3D, but I managed to create a cylinder shape, and I've designed a body label for the cylinder separately, and now trying to find out how to wrap this JPEG layer onto the 3D shape. And today we're going to cover exactly how to do that. So I'm starting in Photoshop and I've got a blank layer and I'm simply going to choose from the 3D menu, New Mesh from Layer, Mesh Preset, Cylinder. I'll go ahead and switch to the 3D workspace and here's my cylinder. At this point the cylinder is covered with a blank texture in the color of the original layer that I used when I created this preset. However, we can see here, if we look in the Layers panel, we have three different textures included in this 3D layer. One for the cylinder, one for the top material, and one for the bottom material. And we can edit these textures simply by double-clicking them here in the Layers panel. Notice that the cylinder material is that same original gray layer. And if I move my mouse back over it, you can see that it's 1600 by 1200, which was the original file size. I'm going to double click, and this edits a new file, layer1.psb, and this is my texture. Now I can do anything I want here, but I've got a background texture in this file, and I'm simply going to use the Move tool and drag it over to this file and hold the Shift key and drop it right in here. Now I can use my free transform by pressing Control or Command T, and I can adjust the size to make it fit. Now at this point we've got some extra space on the side. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to save this file by pressing Control S or Command S and then I'm going to go back to my cylinder. Here if I move this object around we can see that there's still some gray but we've got our texture wrapped around it. Now one easy way to remove that gray is to simply go back here into this texture file and what I'm going to do is control click or command click on the layer thumbnail to load this as a selection. And then I'm simply going to go to image and choose crop. Now I've narrowed down that size. I'll press control S or command S one more time to save it. And if we come back to the cylinder, we can see that now the texture wraps all the way around the cylinder. And this is what we're looking for. I'm going to spin this around a little bit and then I'll switch to the slide tool and maybe zoom back just a little bit so we can see the whole thing. And there we have it. In fact, we can click on the light here and we can adjust the light as we see fit. Now you may notice that your object is a little bit too dark. In the 3D panel, you can choose the cylinder material and just reduce the shine parameter. And this will lighten it up a little bit. Now you can use this same process to edit the textures for the top and bottom. If we go back to the layers panel, we can see the top material and the bottom material are here, and we can edit the textures in the same way. So if you've created a cylinder and you've got a JPEG background, you can add it to your cylinder this way. Now keep in mind, if you are starting with the file with your background texture, just make sure that you've selected that layer and then go to 3D and choose New Mesh from Layer, Mesh Preset, and Cylinder. And this time you'll get an automatic wrap. The layer that you started with will be wrapped around the object right here without doing any extra steps. So that can be convenient. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to show you one final technique. Rather than creating your 3D cylinder using the Mesh Presets, you may have extruded it. And we'll do that here. I've got a selection and a blank layer once again, and with the circular selection active, I'm going to choose 3D, and then I'm going to choose New 3D Extrusion from Current Selection. When I do, we once again have a cylinder, but now it's lying flat on its side. In this case, with an extrusion, the cylinder material on the side here is actually the extrusion material, and we have the front inflation and the back inflation material. If we go back to our Layers panel, we can look here and we can see that we have the extrusion material right here. So we can double click 
this to open it up and then once again we can drag our background texture onto the extrusion material Control T or Command T to resize it and I'm going to press Control 0 so I can zoom back to see the handles I'll bring this down so that it fits and I'll press Control S or Command S to save it and if we look here now we've got this texture mapped onto our extrusion now it's a little bit distorted so you may have to play with it a little bit in this case what I'm going to do is select this object and I'm actually going to stretch the object out make it taller and now our texture fits a little more appropriately in fact we can take this object and rotate it and we'll want to rotate it 90 degrees and we can come over here into the coordinates panel and type in that 90 just to make it exact and now with this object selected I'm going to choose 3D and then move object to ground plane and that will bring it up I'll slide the scene back so that we can see the entire object and then move it around and once again we can adjust the light as we see fit so there you have a couple of different ways for wrapping a two-dimensional JPEG texture onto a 3D cylinder in Photoshop CC. This technique works as well for Photoshop CS6, so if you're still using that version, you can apply this technique as well. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom tips and tricks and related information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tip.